welcome to the Mary Cruz Kennedy Council on Aging Senior Center. Um, here with Ron Van Dam from WXBR AM 1460 Radio, Mark Lindy for Brockton Community Access. And tonight we have the third and final debate of the uh, mayoral campaign season. We have opening and closing statements. Um, we did a drawing in the hallway and uh, Linda Balzotti has the opening statement. First one for one minute. Thank you, Mark. Thank you to Mark, to Ron, uh, and to everybody here at the Brockton Council on Aging, and hello to everyone here at home. My name is Linda Belzotti, and I am currently serving in my second term as mayor of this great city, and I'm running for re-election and asking for your vote on Tuesday, November 5th. I am running to continue serving as mayor because I've always had a passion for our work together. During the past four years as your mayor, we have made progress in a number of areas, and we've made responsible decisions and preserved core services during the worst economy since the Great Depression. And we've also worked tirelessly to prioritize public safety, and we've strengthened the quality of life. We've built on our success to guarantee top-notch educational opportunities for our students, and we've spearheaded more than $100 million in economic development initiatives, and by following a smart infrastructure improvement plan, we have laid the foundation <coughs> for much more to come. That is the work that matters. It is the positive work that we are doing each and every day for Brockton, and it is why I am running to continue leading as city mayor, as your mayor, because we still have more work to do. Thank you. Bill, I can give you another five seconds if you want to. Go for it. Good evening, everyone, and again, uh, thank you to the Council on Aging and BCA and WXBR for co-hosting this event. I'm running for mayor because I believe that it's time for a change in the city of Brockton. I believe our city is in trouble. Seniors on fixed incomes, many struggling to remain in homes that they spent a lifetime paying for, are hit hardest by the mayor's property tax increase, a property tax increase that was used to hand out pay raises. While those senior citizens who live in the elderly high-rises are subjected to living conditions that can only be described as deplorable, buildings infested with bed bugs, cockroaches, and rodents. Our senior citizens are the residents most vulnerable to the city's crime epidemic. Today, many seniors are afraid to open their door or to walk down the street alone. It's time for change. Tonight, I will share with you my vision for the future of the city of Brockton, a city with safer streets, a city with lower taxes, and a city that is open for business. Thank you. And the first question will be from Ron, and I'm going to mix up the order. So the first question to start with is Bill Carpenter. Is this a contest of experience versus fresh approach? How do you characterize this race? I, I think it's, uh, I believe it's a, it's a race about change. I think that, uh, I think that folks who are satisfied with the status quo, uh, I think will vote to return the mayor to office for another term. I think that folks that feel that we need changes in the city government here, whether it's changes in the way city government operates, changes in the way city government hires its employees, uh, changes in how we uh, provide basic public services, and most importantly, I think this, uh, this race really is a referendum on crime and taxes. Uh, I think uh, these are the, I've spent eight months knocking on doors across this city, and those are the two issues that everyone wants to talk about. Uh, people are, uh, you know, upset about the violent crime and don't feel safe in the city and don't feel the city is any safer than it was four years ago. And I think people are upset about the constantly increasing property taxes, and particularly this year, when the property taxes were raised the maximum 2.5% again, and on the same night taxes were raised, uh, eight to $10,000 pay raises were handed out to city officials, many of whom are already making over $100,000 a year. And you know, we've got, as I mentioned in the open, we've got senior citizens on fixed incomes that are struggling to hold on to their homes, uh, making a lot less than $100,000 a year that are being asked to pay for those pay raises. So I think this really comes down to a, uh, a campaign based upon uh, whether the residents are satisfied with the way everything is going in the city right now or whether they feel we can do better. I feel I can do better. I feel that I've laid out very specific plans as to how I'm going to provide real property tax relief, how I'm going to bring jobs and businesses back to the city, and how I'm going to make the streets and the neighborhoods of this city safer. And uh, I hope and believe that the majority of the residents uh, will embrace that plan and will select me to serve as their next mayor. Thank you. Same question to Linda. I do I, I have the two minutes or the one minute? I, I believe actually that residents in the city of Brockton, the majority, recognize the good work that we have done over the last two year, uh, four years, rather. I think they 
see that we have a number of economic development initiatives that have, are underway or have taken place. They see the new market basket. They see the work at the mall. They see uh, the event that we had this afternoon in downtown regarding the Trinity Financial Project. They see Jason Corb's building. They see all of the good work that has been happening. Uh, they know and they have met with and heard from the police chief and the work that's been done in terms of um, public safety in, in the city. They know that we did almost $600,000 in um, park and playground improvements, that we have an additional uh, $400,000 coming for another uh, playground at the James Edgar Park. And they, they understand and recognize the work has, that has been done. Um, no one understands more about fixed incomes than I do, given the fact that um, my mom is still in her own home. So I take very seriously expenditures in the city. I think that seniors, many of them have uh, been through difficult economic times in the history of this country. They know the hard times that we're going through. They also know and appreciate the fact that it, um, it takes everybody to uh, contribute to a city, and I think that they have seen the good work that is going on, and they recognize how important it is and what we're doing and how we're all doing it as a team. And um, the folks here at the Council on Aging, we're, we're with them all the time and we talk with them all the time, and they have recognized all the work that is going down on, particularly in downtown. And uh, they know that it takes everybody to make a city work. Thank you. Is there any follow-up yeah, needed? Uh, each one can have. Format. I thought it was two minutes on the question, yeah, one minute on the rebuy. Two minutes for both on first. So both and answering the yeah. question, every oh, okay. question. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Right. Didn't mean to be confusing. Right. Okay. You can, would, would you need another minute or you want to go yeah, on yeah, to Yeah, I'll do a quick one minute rebuttal. I, I mean, I think that uh, the choice in this race for mayor, a lot of it is about um, leadership style and uh, style working. I think that, um, I think Mayor Balzotti has been a closed door mayor. I've heard dozens and dozens of complaints from business owners, from uh, citizens who can't get in to see the mayor or have had letters uh, not answered by the mayor. I think that uh, my style would be completely opposite. I, I'm a guy that knows how to work with the door open. I think I'm very easily accessible and I'm always around the city. I believe also there'd be a significant difference in terms of the attitude at City Hall towards business, whether it's small businesses that are trying to open or struggle to keep their doors open here in the city, uh, who feel as though they don't get any help uh, at City Hall, particularly minority-owned businesses who feel as though that they're not treated on an equal basis when it comes to dealing with the city, to being an ambassador for the city and going out and attracting large companies to come here and bring their jobs here. So I think there are some very clear differences between the mayor and myself that we've laid out over the course of the campaign. Okay, one minute. We have had extremely open door policy. We have established constituent hours. We have individuals come into the office all the time. I think you, there's people in this room that see me on a consistent basis everywhere I go. And um, I think the city has a very business friendly uh, attitude. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had all the businesses of date that have located here. We've worked with a number of um, developers and, and folks that have come in. Even, uh, as I said, the event today was very successful and everybody was very pleased and, and talked about how helpful the city has been. If you talk to um, Chris Spilios of Crown Linen, he will tell you the same thing. Dan Evans of Evans Machine. We've worked with a number of individuals. We work with them all the time. Uh, my staff works diligently to respond to requests to constituent issues and I work with them on particular issues that become uh, something that somebody wants to see me. So uh, we have had a very open door policy, uh, but Mr. Carpenter has not have yet to shown us who the people are that say these things. Okay, I'm going to ask the next question, and uh, same thing, two minutes for the answer, and if you need a rebuttal, we'll go one minute each. Okay, and I'll reset the clock so it'll actually be the right time. Okay, here we go. Um, could you describe uh, your working relationships with others, whether it be city councilors, school committee members, the state delegation, or the mayor, if you're not the mayor, um, just how will that be better for the citizens of Brockton or continue? We'll start with uh, Bill Carpenter. I just went first in the last one, didn't I, Mac? Mm. No. I'm switching it up. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. sorry. Doesn't make any difference. Um, 
I think in terms of uh, how I work with others, I think for people who know me, uh, they would tell you that uh, I get along with everyone even when we don't disagree. And I think that's a characteristic that's important in a leader. Uh, during my four years on the school committee, um, I've certainly had many differences of opinion uh, with my colleagues on the school committee, but I've always worked very closely with them. Uh, I've always uh, tried to find a middle ground to compromise. I think I'm a person on the school committee who's been able to build coalitions and build support. And uh, when tough decisions had to be made on the budget, I was one of the leaders on that committee and working with some of the other members to come up with resolutions that everyone could support. So I believe that uh, I have a long track record of working well with others, and particularly leading others and surrounding myself with top quality people to uh, accomplish a goal. So whether it was uh, some of the folks and agencies that I pulled together when we uh, rebuilt the Plyff School Playground, uh, or uh, when I led the effort for several years to uh, open and get funded Independence Academy, the state's fourth recovery school, uh, I was able to now put together a group of strategic partners from all different uh, areas of expertise, get everyone at the table together working uh, towards the same goal, and we were successful in getting that school open and, and obtaining two and a half million dollars of grant funding. And I think also if you ask some of the members of the uh, Rocky Marciano Statue Committee that I joined midway, that I brought a lot to the table and helped get some things accomplished on that committee also. So I think if you look at my resume, I have a strong background of uh, not just working well with others, but attracting top quality people and being a leader. Thank you. Two minutes. Well, having served on the city council, I recognize the fact that uh, city government and having been mayor for the four, uh, last four years is a form B form of government. So there's not a lot that you can do without the support of and working with the city council. I've worked with I think each ward counselor on a specific project or program uh, specific to their wards, and in addition to that, worked with um, the counselor at larges for ideas that they've also had that they've wanted to incorporate. Uh, and I have had the great good fortune to have a very, I think, cooperative working relationship with them. You're not, there's 11 counselors and a mayor, and you're not always going to agree. Uh, but I think that we've had a very good relationship. And in terms of the state delegation and um, state officials, I think we have an excellent relationship, uh, which is shown for all of the projects that were that are underway right now, the $100 million Trinity project, Jason Corb's capstone community projects. None of those projects would have been possible if we didn't have a cooperative work with the various secretariats that oversee the different agencies that are providing us uh, the funding and working with all of them in order to ensure that we had got money for infrastructure improvements like the bridges <coughs> and the lighting that we have in downtown, uh, infrastructure improvements like Pleasant Street work that's being done, that the West Elm Street work that will soon to be done, and all of that comes with being able to uh, work with people and and being able to get along and understand. And believe me, when you have a project as big as the Trinity Project, there are a lot of things that happen that you have to be able to work not only with the developers but the agencies involved because uh, oftentimes things change, are in flux because of the difficulties that you face as the project goes under construction. Uh, but I'm very proud of the relationships that I have with um, both the counselors and state and federal delegations, and I think uh, we've been very successful for it with all the grant money that's come in of late over the last four years. All of that works together in terms of the relationship. Time. Uh, next question, Ron. It's time now for your power plant question. Uh, you are both uh, opposed in your opinions. One candidate thinks that the city is basically for it. One candidate thinks that the city is basically against it. Address that and uh, potential respiratory health concerns. It's your final opportunity to speak on this subject. Well, I think I have a couple of questions in there, Ron, so I'll do the best I can uh, to answer them. First, regarding the respiratory concerns, I think it, people really need to do their own due diligence and look at what the facts are regarding air quality in the city of Brockton. You know, I supported the effort to install this new air quality monitor at the Gilmore School. Now, I don't think a lot of people realize that DEP has been monitoring the air quality in the city of Brockton for 10 years. There's been an, an air monitor on the roof of the Commercial Street Post Office for 10 years. And that data is readily available. Uh, the 2012 data for the entire year of 2012 was published uh, as a report in July of this year. 
it showed that uh, it showed a couple of things. It showed that the PM 2.5 levels are down one third from when they first started monitoring the air quality 10 years ago. It also showed that of the 10 cities that DEP monitors the air quality, that uh, Brockton had the third cleanest air of those 10 cities. Now it's interesting, we haven't had that Gilmore School monitor for very long. It's been about a month and a half. I think it was September 20th that it started giving its first readings. But through the limited amount of data that we have so far, it's absolutely consistent with what uh, we've found from the 10 years of readings on top of the uh, post office. It has not shown readings any different than what we've been collecting on the post office. It shows levels at about one third of the federal uh, guidelines in terms of levels of PM 2.5. So I, I encourage people to not listen to rhetoric, to check the data, and the data shows that there is not an issue with Brockton's air quality in terms of being compared with any other city. Uh, Ron, in terms of support or non-support, what the public thinks, you know, I think it would have been great if this had been a referendum question sometime, you know, eight years ago. Uh, I lobbied for that for years. Uh, but the reality is today, is that it's now a court matter, that there's ongoing lit, uh, litigation, including the city's appeal of, of the uh, decision to appeal the decision to award the uh, air quality certificate to the plant. Okay, I'm going to do two minutes and ten seconds. I, I appreciate the two minutes and the ten seconds, but I, I think that most people know where I stand on this. I've been uh, opposed to this from the uh, beginning. I believe um, that, in fact, the air quality and the environmental issues surrounding this project are not in the best interest of the residents of the city. I think that, um, you know, we still have a, a high asthma rate in our young children, and I think that every family deserves to have the ability to raise their children and to live in a community where um, they can breathe the air and, and feel free and be healthy. And um, I also have concerns, and I've always had concerns regarding the location, its proximity to schools and um, senior housing, um, the, the access, and in fact, uh, during the initial phases of this project when it was discussed about uh, there, the state requirements for submitting um, a plan or a project like this does not require you to submit any um, information about what would happen in the event of an emergency. And when I put this in one of my letters, the response from the developers was, well, we only have 20 people working there, so it doesn't really matter. So first of all, to think that the 20 people don't matter is one thing, but also to think that um, it's only your 20 people when we have a number of our largest employees in the city down in this area uh, working every day. And if something were to happen, they would need to be uh, evacuated just like everybody else, not to mention the fact that your school buses are down there, and if you had an issue, you'd need to get and take uh, the children out of the Davis school. So that kind of um, response concerned me about what do these people really care or think about the community in which they're planning to locate. And I think that that means that they don't think very highly of the community that they're coming to locate in. And so I, I just believe that that project is just not in the best interest of the community and um, that's not going to change. Okay. Would you like a follow-up for that sure. for a minute? Okay. Let me reset it and someday I'll get this. I think it's important that people follow where the status of this litigation is right now today between the developers of this plant and the city of Brockton. There have been six court decisions and three appeals, and in all nine cases it's either been resolved or decided in favor of the developers of the plant. In addition to that, there's a $68 million civil rights lawsuit hanging over the head of the city. And the, back on May 30th, Judge Sorokin denied every single motion that the city made in that case to try to exclude defendants, including one of the motions was to exclude the mayor, who is a defendant in that lawsuit. Uh, so I just believe that the reasonable approach, if you look at the litigation, is that this is coming sooner or later. Whether you think it's a good idea, or you think it's a bad idea, when you lose nine times in a row, it's time to admit that plan A is not working, and let's work on plan B. Over a million dollars, I think it's 1.2 or 1.3 million dollars in outside legal fees, your hard-earned property tax money to out-of-town lawyers to lose nine in a row. Does not make any sense to me. 
one, uh, one minute. I have always said that I, I am putting first and foremost the health and safety of the residents of the city, and I'm going to continue to do that. And in terms of the tax dollars being spent uh, in order to defend these cases, just think about what would happen to your property values if this project was built and your property values decline considerably, then, um, then you're going to be in even worse condition than uh, that. So uh, that's where I'm at with that. I'm going to continue to fight on behalf of the residents. Okay, we're going to go to the next question, and I'm going to, I'm going to ask it. Um, in terms, if you could change any one aspect about Brockton, what would that be? I go first on every single question. It's just my imagination. I keep okay. flipping it back and forth. All right. Um, if I could change one aspect of Brockton, I, I guess it would have to be the, uh, the violent crime. We've got to get the drugs and the guns off the streets of our city. You know, it, it's, our neighborhoods are no longer safe. Our children are being poisoned uh, by drugs on a daily basis. Uh, there are people riding around this city every day and every night with illegal guns in their cars that are, are willing to use them. Shots are fired almost on a daily basis. And I, I've lost track of how many times we're on the nightly news uh, on the Boston TV stations with the latest uh, shooting or stabbing. So don't get me wrong. I chose to live in Brockton. I came here 27 years ago. I'm still here. I raised my six children here. I have three or four, three soon to be four grandchildren. Uh, and we're all still here in the city of Brockton. So I think there are a lot of great things about the city of Brockton, and that's why I'm here. Great people, great history, great potential, great resources that I don't believe we're fully taking advantage of. So, I mean, I am absolutely committed to being here. I believe that Brockton is a great city. Uh, but we have to acknowledge the fact that we have a problem with gangs, we have a problem with guns, and we have a problem with drugs. And we need a mayor that's going to take those issues head on and not just keep trying the same old things that haven't worked. And we need to clean up the streets of the city because I do believe that once we turn the corner on the crime problem in the city, that Brockton then will become the land of opportunity for the next 10 years. There is so much depressed real estate here and vacant and abandoned property that people will be coming in to purchase that we can have a rebirth of this city and bring this city back. But right now, honestly, with all the violence in the news, who wants to open a home or a business here right now? Purchase a home or open a business. Okay. I gave him a minute 30. I'm going to give you a minute 30. Uh, actually, there are a lot of people who want to open businesses in the city, and they're coming here. And that's the, and the one thing that I would like to do and change is to be able to improve and continue that and to keep it moving and increasing, because it's only with that economic development that you will be able to have the revenues available, not only to address the public safety issue and the ability to hire um, more police officers and people to help address the public safety issue, but also to be able to give the homeowners the tax relief that everybody would so like to give them. So I would like to, in fact, uh, make it a place and pr improve on that economic development and work with uh, developers and bring them in to see all the great projects that are have been created and are being built currently and um, and move all of those forward so that we can have those tax revenues that um, we so often discuss and are difficult to come by and can only come as we increase our tax base and improve uh, development and business in within the city. So that's the thing that I would like to do is to be able to increase and um, improve on that so that we can have those things um, available and provide the relief to, rate, uh, to the taxpayers that we'd like to be able to. Thank you. Want to follow up? Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure where all this uh, growth on the commercial side is coming from because in the CFO's cover letter, the City Council with the budget this year, he stated that there was no growth in commercial property tax revenue. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the commercial property tax rate in this city is the 20th highest in the Commonwealth. Out of 342 communities reporting, Brockton has the 20th highest commercial property tax rate. And just take, take a ride on Main Street. Start at the West Bridgewater Line and take a ride up to Avon. And how much vacant, abandoned commercial space is in this city right now? But yet you just drive over that line into West Bridgewater, just drive over that line into Avon, and what do you find? 
industrial parks because companies are locating just outside the city limits to take bene to, to benefit from the lower taxes just outside of Brockton while, while taking all the benefits of the city. So the fact of the matter is that we have to get the commercial property tax rate down in order to compete with the surrounding communities and get businesses and their jobs back into the city. And I agree with the mayor. Expanding the commercial tax base will help reduce the burden on the homeowners. But according to the CFO and the, this year's budget, that is not happening right now. And we've got to get that 20th highest in the state commercial property tax rate down. And I have a plan to bring in revenues from other sources so that we can provide real property tax relief to both homeowners and businesses. Okay. Linda? Well, we've discussed at length during the campaign your ideas for revenues and they're all ideas in using the enterprise accounts which you can't do at this time. So he, the question was what would I like to change or what would I like to see improved and that's what I would like to change and that's what I would like to see improved. To bring the businesses in to create the kinds of tax revenues necessary to in fact be able to provide the services and the tax relief to uh, the ratepayers that we want to provide. And um, I think that we have done a terrific job. I listed Market Basket, Bernardi Auto Group, Northeast Electric, the Trinity Project, Jason Corb's Project, all of these developments that are happening and that have happened in the last four years and that we're going to continue to work on. And the fact of the matter is that, yes, there are vacant buildings. And when you ask what I want to see changed, I want to see people in those buildings. And we're going to continue to work to do that, to bring developers to the community, to show them the work that's going on, and to work with them to be able to locate in the city of Brockton. Okay, next question, Ron, for the mayor. What are the challenges and then benefits of being the mayor of a heavily diverse, multicultural city? Linda? The benefits are that you have a lot of uh, different communities and different cultures and different opportunities to learn and experience and um, just to be able to get to know um, all of the different things and celebrate the cultures and um, I think it's really great. It's, it's just like, it's just an opportunity of the world. The challenges are that um, you need to be able to um, provide the information to have the translations available, to work with people, to um, provide the opportunities for them so that they can, in fact, open their business or put their child in school and, and have the knowledge and the ability to do all of those things. Uh, but it really is a, a wonderful thing. It's an opportunity for children to have to learn about other places and other things and other cultures. And it's an eye-opening experience, I think, for everybody. And I think it makes us uh, a really terrific community because not everything is the same. Everything is different. And they're an opportunity to enjoy and to, um, to just really have a, a good experience and not just kind of one view or one vision of the world. So um, I think it's very advantageous to be in this community. Okay. Bill? Well, I mean, Brockton's an immig immigrant city. That's what our history is. It's, it's changed over the years from Italians and Irish and Lithuanians to now Cape Verdeans and Haitians and Latinos and people from all over the world. Um, but I understand. I spend a lot of time in these communities. I consider myself to be a member of these communities. And the folks in these communities feel like they're uh, being taxed without representation. Uh, they're treated differently when they come to City Hall. They're treated differently in terms of licensing and permitting. Uh, they're treated differently in hiring practices. And we need a, someone that's going to go in and open up City Hall, change the hiring practices of this city, change and, and open up the door to City Hall and let everyone in and treat everyone the same. So the diversity should be our strength and I think it you know it certainly is at times but we truly need a leader in this city that can pull all these different communities together and get us working together to turn this city around that means all the, the various uh, minority owned businesses in the city uh, helping them to grow and thrive that's why I proposed my Main Streets program uh, it means doing a better job hiring uh, more diverse teaching staff in the schools and it means that we have to be uh, make sure that we're reaching out to all the communities 170 Brockton police officers, only two speak Haitian Creole. Uh, I don't think people, if I were Haitian, I don't think I'd feel very good about that. Okay, let me just reset this clock and make sure it's on the right time. So a minute to respond. 
Okay, it's just Saturday. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, we, I actually have a very good relationship with um, both the, with many and all of the uh, communities in the city. I am welcomed wherever I go. I have had the opportunity to work with all of the communities. Um, we have. We have not had a lot of openings in terms of um, employees in City Hall, but um, many of the openings that we have had, we uh, work very hard to um, hire individuals to diversify the, the look of City Hall. And I certainly, in terms of boards and commissions, have worked very hard to make sure that they are representative of, um, of all of Brockton, of how Brockton looks. And uh, I think that we have been uh, done very well with that. I think that there is always room for improvement. In terms of the police department, any time we hire, we hire. Uh, every four we hire, um, we, are, we have to hire at least one minority officer. We uh, exceed that. We have bilingual people on every shift, and we've worked very hard at that. Okay. Bill, one minute. I don't know if I need the whole minute. Uh, I, uh, in terms of the Brockton Police Department, yes, there have been some minority officers hired. Uh, it would be nice to promote one of them somewhere along the way because there's not one supervising officer in the entire um, Brockton Police Department of color. And until we uh, open up the avenues for promotion, uh, I, people are going to feel disenfranchised. Uh, until we do a better job of, of being sensitive to the needs of the various uh, communities in this city, we're not going to bring everyone together. I've walked in almost every minority-owned business, predominantly Cape Verdean-owned businesses, from one end of Main Street to the other. Uh, most of them don't even know who the mayor is, and they all feel as though that they pay the same taxes for the same, but they don't receive the same services in the city. Listen, the diversity is the strength. I embrace, I have diversity within my own family. Um, so, I mean, I, I get it, and I want to lead this city forward, but we've got to open the doors to City Hall, equal opportunities in hiring, uh, and, and actually walk the walk. It's one thing to talk the talk, but let's start walking the walk. We have our police chief uh, comes from Portugal, so I think that we, uh, we, we've done pretty well at um, hiring uh, in promoting, but in addition to that, uh, we do have to promote based on um, strict civil service uh, requirements. And but we would be more than happy to uh, to work and to see that. But I, I just want to make a point of saying that our police chief is an immigrant from Portugal. Bill, I'm going to give you another 30 seconds. Uh, well, first of all, the civil service rules do allow you to reach down the list to promote minorities, just as you described for patrolmen. You can do that with supervising officers. Also, has not been done, and I'm I'm sure you know Chief Gomes is very proud of his uh, Portuguese heritage. Uh, but I think that when we're talking about the significant Cape Verdean, Haitian, and African American communities in this city, none of them are represented, and and that's who I was talking about. Time. Okay. Uh, next question, uh, I'll start with the mayor. Um, a lot of talk has been out there both for the different ward council races and the council at large races in terms of businesses and business friendly. Do you feel Brockton has a business friendly climate? Yes or no and why? Oh man, okay. Yes, I do. Uh, as I said, we have had a number of developers and folks that we've worked with uh, that have come to us and, and thanked us for uh, all the cooperation and, and work that we have done with them. Um, we bring folks in all the time, either through the Brockton 21st Century Corporation or through my office. Uh, we talk to them. We get them uh, through the processes. We show them what way to go. Um, we, we want uh, successful and businesses, both small and large. And in fact, um, we're working right now with SEED to develop a, a loan program for Brockton. It was actually announced a couple weeks ago so that we can encourage and help small businesses who oftentimes have difficulty getting financing, particularly if they just need a small amount of uh, financing in, or in order to get their business open because we want um, to be able to have folks locate, particularly in downtown, and, and open up some of those buildings. Well, I guess the mayor has never tried to get a variance or a building permit issued in the city of Brockton, because I've spoken to a lot of people who have been tried to get through that process, 
and uh, they feel as though that uh, they're dragged over the coals by the city boards. The process has dragged out for months. People in city government don't have any feel whatsoever as to what it takes for a private entrepreneur to, to earn a profit. Um, I've met with many developers, Mayor, who won't uh, develop in the city of Brockton anymore because they feel as though uh, it's just not cost effective. They go to Easton, they go to Bridgewater, they go to Abington, those towns embrace them. They come here, they get dragged out in months worth of hearings. Uh, we need to streamline the processes for building permits and put it online. That's how Boston does it. Uh, we need to have all of our permits and licenses for uh, businesses online. Uh, we need a Main Street Manager program so that the small businesses have an ombudsman to represent them in City Hall. And most of all, we have to change this anti-business climate that exists. And the mayor can deny it all she wants, but I've been out there with the business owners and with the, with the developers, and uh, they just feel as though that they, they are, their business is not welcome here. Well, let me introduce you to uh, the next time you're out walking to the businesses that I talk to and I work with all the time, and they will tell you how um, happy they are to be in the city, the welcoming attitudes they got, the uh, assistance they got to uh, locate here. Uh, they will tell you how we have helped them through uh, TIF processes or zoning uh, programs or the planning board or, or getting them started and ready to, to move on. So um, I, I can introduce you to many, many businesses that have uh, located here uh, recently and through the last four years that have had uh, not a prop nary a problem in order to establish here in the city of Brockton. Is that issue done? Okay, Ron, uh, make sure I have my clock set. Go ahead. As mayor, you are an ambassador to the city. You represent the city. The demeanor that you have, the approach that you have, is the image of the city. Talk to me about that as far as you're concerned. I've lost track of who's first. Yeah, huh? I have two, so that's okay. I think I am. Mark said okay. I am. Uh, I think that um, if you see the work that's gone on in the city, you know that I have had um, a great success in terms of representing the city. I, I think that um, we have had a great working relationship at the, the state level. Uh, I have gone to many hearings and uh, events and things in the state uh, not only to um, to talk on behalf of the city, but to work with officials in order to um, bring money home to the city. And um, I do think that you have to have, and you have to have an ability to work with people. And I think that I have done that not only in the four years I was mayor, but on the 12 years that I was on the city council. I don't, I don't think you get to um, this point without having the ability to work with people to represent yourself well and represent yourself in a, a professional capacity. And, um, you know, there, there obviously is a lot of times that you have to speak in public or uh, work with people. And I think that um, that is probably the biggest part of the job and one that I've been um, very successful at. And uh, I look forward to doing it for another two years. Well, I think that... Uh I'm certainly not going to be critical of the mayor personally, who's a very nice lady. Um, but I think that we do have different styles and personalities. Um, I think I'm a lot more outgoing. I'm a lot more approachable. And I think I would take this job as ambassador for the city very seriously. You can't sit in City Hall waiting for the phone to ring. You've got to be out there in the community. And you've got to be out there outside of the city uh, selling Brockton to the investors. We're not going to turn this city around uh, on government offices and low-income housing. We're going to turn this city around by getting private investment in the city. And we've got to have a mayor who can represent what's best about the city and uh, proactively be out there uh, selling the city to both families to come here and purchase a home and live here, and also selling and marketing the city to uh, prospective business owners to locate a business here, to open a business here, where real estate developers or investors to come in and purchase a piece of property here and fix up some of this abandoned, neglected property. You can't walk a block in the city without going by a vacant, abandoned house. You can't drive one block through a business district without seeing vacant commercial space. We've got to have a mayor who will go out there and sell the city to people, the benefits to come in. But again, in order to make that happen, you got to lower taxes and lower crime to make the city attractive. You can be the best salesman in the world, but until we 
lower taxes and lower crime, that's what it's going to take to bring business and investment to the city. Uh, follow up? I am out of my office all of the time. I am not in my office. You don't do the kind of work and have the kind of success that we've had in the last four years by sitting in your office. And I think that anyone um, will tell you that they see me at a myriad of places all the time. So, um, you know, to say that I'm in my office all, the de all day or not seeing people or not being involved or going to other communities, you know, my calendar is something that um, many, most people wouldn't even be able to keep up with me. And, uh, and I, but I enjoy it. That's what it's all about. It is getting out there. It is being with people. It is selling the city. And I use myself in this example because I am very proud of being a native Brocktonian and being born and raised in this community and being able to use what I've obtained in this city and from my education to be able to get to where I am. And, um, you know, that's the thing that I sell when I go to all of the various places and that I go to is to show them who we are as a city. Well, I, all I can tell you is what I found from eight months of walking through the city and talking to small business owner after small business owner who feels ignored and neglected by the current administration. High water rates, high taxes, no response from City Hall when there's a problem, and having the businesses also affected by the crime. There are very few business owners in the city right now who feel as though they're, they're making a reasonable amount of money. Many of these business owners are struggling just to hang on. And I think sometimes they get frustrated that when a high visibility uh, company does want to come in with a big tax break, uh, that they wonder why the businesses that have been fighting and struggling to survive here for years aren't getting any help. Need another minute? Uh, but that many of the businesses that uh, have been here for years are getting help as they're doing their expansions. They have come to us and we have been able to help them. So, you know, as I said, Mr. Carpenter, I'd like to take you to the people that I've been talking to and uh, you get a different story. Don't you want 30 seconds? Okay, Ron, uh, next question. Uh, speaking about uh, violent crime in the streets, there have been some sweeps recently. What can be done right now with monies that are available right now to take care of this problem? Are they being taken care of? What are the steps feasibly, not future, today? Bill first. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things we can do. We can do real community policing where we reestablish trust between the people in the neighborhoods and the police department. Um, I think that we can target high-risk, high-crime areas and use saturated enforcement using existing resources. As an example, bringing the traffic unit in to a distressed neighborhood on a Friday or Saturday night instead of sitting up by the fairgrounds at 2 o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. So we can redeploy assets that we have. We can embrace new techniques. We can copy what they did in spring. Springfield uh, four years ago when a couple of state troopers came back from the Afghan uh, uh, province uh, and, and uh uh, came back to the uh, Massachusetts and went out and worked with the Springfield Police Gang Unit adopting some of the same uh, counterinsurgency techniques that they had used in, in Iraq and Afghanistan to the city of Springfield. And four years later, their violent crime is down substantially. We can adopt those same practices here in Brockton. If it's worked someplace else, we can adapt it here. I think we can also get a drug court established uh, in the Brockton uh, District Court, uh, which would allow uh, uh, defendants to uh, get an opportunity to get treatment instead of jail. 90% of the property crime in this city is committed by someone who's stealing to pay for an addiction. Uh, so we need to get these people into drug court and help them cure the addiction instead of just constantly churning the same people through the criminal justice system. We can also, without spending a lot of money, Ron, we can do a better job of having curriculum in the schools, in the elementary and middle schools, anti-gang, anti-gun. I mean, anti-gang, anti-drug, because kids are making decisions at age 13 and 14 that determine the outcome of their life. We need to be proactively speaking to those kids and educating them to make good decisions at younger ages, and uh, th that would make a difference in terms of helping to keep kids out of gangs and off of drugs. Linda? We have actually had a number of sweeps uh, since 2012. There's actually been 10 sweeps that we have undertaken. 
uh, and we will, uh, we're going to continue those efforts. We actually just found out the other day uh, that we were awarded some additional community um, policing uh, monies, uh, actually a considerable amount more than we had been, uh, re have received in the past, and we'll be able to utilize that. Um, I think it was almost $400,000 more than we have in the past. So that is going to help us tremendously. We have uh, 12 officers in the academy. We have um, four more that are um, in this budget, and we will soon um, have several more positions due to um, retirements or individuals who are um, out on disability that will be able to um, refill. Now, those are positions that um, we have currently, however, some of those officers due to injury might not be currently um, on the street. So we will have um, new bodies uh, on the streets as well, um, and that will bring out, those will bring our numbers up. We do a lot of work with our young people, proactive. I will say that, and I know this is going to be hard to believe, but um, Mr. Carpenter actually said tonight that once, once he said he agreed with me, and I, so I have to go right back and say that I actually agree with him. Um, on the drug court. I, I will say that I was not um, as familiar with it when the topic was first discussed, but I do think that it is, in fact, a way that we can help and uh, work with and, and address some of the issues and, and help um, some of our young people who um, might have a situation where it really incarceration is not um, the best option. So I, I agree with him on that. Um, the other issue is right now is that we are going to be facing a lot from the Dukin scandal of people getting released and that we're going to have to um, work to address those as well. Okay, follow up. Yeah, just briefly, I think that during this campaign, the, the you know, in terms of crime fighting, the mayor takes claim for a lot of uh, programs and, and uh, uh, techniques that the police are using that were in place before Mayor Balzotti uh, came to office. Her uh, mail piece, and last night in the debate, she uh, claimed uh, credit for establishing the city's first ever gang unit. The reality is we had a gang unit in the city 20 years ago. We had a gang unit for years. It was retooled a little bit. The name was changed to the impact unit, and then it was the name was changed back to the gang unit. But we've had a, a unit doing the same work, chasing guns and gang members on the streets and drugs for over 20 years. So this is not a new initiative. So many of these programs that the mayor likes to tout are things that have been going on in the city for a number of years. I think it's time for some new leadership at the police department. I think it's time for some new techniques. Uh, counterinsurgency techniques against uh, uh, gang leaders who are urban terrorists, true community policing, and saturated enforcement. We've got to send the message that the drug dealers and the gang members are not going to be allowed to just operate with impunity within our city. We've got to get them off the streets, and if the court lets them go, we arrest them again, and we keep arresting them until the court finally holds on to them. But I, I'm not willing to sit by and watch a uh, kids being led into a life of gangs and drugs any longer. Follow up. You know, uh, Bill has stated for every debate about his plan, about this plan, and many of the parts of his plans are things we already do. He talks about uh, relentless pursuit. Well, we've arrested hundreds and hundreds of people, both in those sweeps and outside those sweeps. He talks about um, the GREAT program, and we just uh, educated all of our um, school police officers in that program. He, they talk about faith-based uh, leadership and, and working with the community. We do that already through Operation Divinity, but we're doing more than that. We have the Safe and Successful Youth Initiative where we're dealing with uh, both perpetrators of violence or people that are, are young males who have been impacted by violence. We're working with that. We use a Shannon Grant. We're working with young people. It's a mix. It's both. It's law enforcement and it's preventative in order to address the issues before they become law enforcement issues, but to address the law enforcement issues as well. I think it's time to start preventing crimes instead of solving crimes. Uh, and I, I believe that uh, it's time to protect the people who live in the neighborhoods, 
whatever the plan was that you had, Mayor, it has not worked. You've been there for four years, and the streets are more dangerous than they've ever been. You can quote all the statistics you want. Try walking down the streets and asking the people how they feel. Uh, murders are up 50% over last year. Uh, Brockton is the second most violent city in all of New England, uh, and the people and the residents are not safe here. It's hurting our property values. It hinders bringing businesses to the city, a and our senior citizens, uh, many of whom are afraid to walk down the street uh, by themselves because of the fact uh, that they're in fear. Um, and I've heard this over and over and over again. So you can talk about programs and statistics, but the fact of the matter is, I don't feel any safer than I did four years ago, and most of the residents of the city do not feel any safer than they did four years ago. Bill, you're the one that's continually bringing up statistics, but what you don't tell people is the fact that only 35% of the communities in Massachusetts even report statistics, and if you use the statistics and based it on the way that you do it and the way that the real estate website does, that in 2011, Provincetown would have been the murder capital of the state. So you continue to use these statistics. The issue is, is that not the statistics, it's the statistician and how they uh, twist them that becomes the issue. We report in Brockton everything because that puts us in a position for grant funding that we use and apply for in order to keep the streets safe. So you can continue to talk about the statistics and say that I'm talking about them, but you're the one that keeps bringing them up and manipulate them and manipulating them. And, and you're just going to keep uh, perpetuating this when even the FBI says that that's not the way to utilize the statistics, that's not what they're for. And what maybe if um, it would be interesting to see what would happen if all communities submitted their statistics. What are they afraid of, the communities that don't report them? Final thought on that. Well, it, it, in terms of uh, the, the FBI statistics that we use to compile this national report on neighborhoodscout.com, uh, Provincetown, by the way, was not even included, so I don't know where you're getting uh, that particular one. But among the cities that ranked with less violence than the city of Brockton, Washington, D.C., Miami, Florida, Newark New, uh, Newark, New Jersey, Compton, California. I mean, those are all cities who uh, were cons had less violent crime per capita, per person, uh, than the city of Brockton did. And, and Mayor, I, I don't want to argue the statistics with you either, because you'll make yours say what you want, and I'll present my statistics. The fact of the matter is that it's dangerous in Brockton. Residents do not feel safe. It's not any safer than it was four years ago. And if you don't believe me, try walking through a few neighborhoods and ask the residents of the city how they feel. Okay. We're going to go to the last question and then closing statements. Ron? During your closing statement, you'll be telling why people should vote for you. But as this is the last opportunity, spell out for me quickly the differences between you. Linda first. Uh, you know what? I think the major differences are, are our opinion, quite frankly, on the power plant and our, our stance on that and whether people want that in the their community and the ramifications of that and how it will impact their community. And I think we're just um, two very uh, distinct and different individuals. A bill quotes on the radio that, you know, he doesn't need the council, he doesn't have to work with the council. Um, I think that shows that, um, you know, that he doesn't want to work with people. When you say things like that publicly and you know you're in a Form B uh, form of government where you have to work with the council. Um, I have a good working relationship with the council. I have a good working relationship with the school committee, I think. Um, and I have a, a good working relationship with the state delegation. And I've been able to move um, projects and, and work forward. And I've done the work, and I've, the results are here. And uh, we're going to continue to do that work. And um, I think it's important. But I think that um, the, one of the main differences for and between us is the power plant and how you feel on that and, and what your thoughts are about whether you want that in your community or not. Well, I can think of some, some things right off the top of my head that I would do differently as mayor. I would make Stonehill College pay full price for their sewage and not let them underpay by three-quarters of a million dollars under the Balzotti administration. Um, something I would do differently 
is uh, I would not put liens on the houses of over 700 Brockton families knowing that the water bills were incorrect in a lot of those uh, properties. And one of the first things I'll do as mayor is I will order a thorough review of every single account of those water liens, and in any instance where there's a disputed water bill, I'll remove the lien, get the bill settled amicably or, or fairly, and then if they don't pay, then you put the lien on. But you don't put the liens on people blanketed that really hurt a lot of families. I would have never instructed the treasurer to put those liens on. Uh, over 700 families were dramatically impacted. I think a big difference between the mayor and I is I'm not going to keep giving uh, that Korean company $6 million a year for that desal water that we don't use. Uh, and don't need. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is the, the mayor issues a check for half a million dollars every month and sends it off to GS Engineering that owns the Aquaria uh, desal plant. I will stop payment on those payments, and I'm not going to, I'm going to file suit against them. The owners of that water plant have breached the contract. They breached the contract by not spending the, the marketing money. They breached the contract by not aggressively marketing the water to other users, both public and private. So immediately on day one, I'll stop sending them money, and I'm, I will take them to court, and I will do everything I can to get us out of that contract and save the taxpayers the money. I won't say it is what it is. Okay, we're going to go right to closing statements, and let me make sure I have a two-minute clock. Uh, we did a drawing earlier in the night, and Linda has the first closing statement. So again, thank you to Mark and Ron, and to the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. But thank you anyway. Thank you to Mark and Ron, to the COA and everyone here and uh, everyone at home. Uh, four years ago when I first ran for mayor, I mentioned that like many Brocktonians, I was raised to understand the spirit and true fabric of this great city. My dad, Genicio, a World War II veteran, and my mom, Betty, both instilled in me what we all know about this city. That we're a city where neighbors help one another, where our kids get a great education with opportunities to shine in academics, athletics, and the arts, and where good businesses like to set down roots and set examples for the world. We're also a strong city that has never shied away from a little hard work. We've confronted challenges together with determination and always in the best interests of Brockton. Our work together over the past four years in this campaign has always been about living by these same principles. It's been the work that I've done as your mayor over the past four years to guide the city through the most challenging financial times since the Great Depression. It has been our tireless efforts to strengthen our public safety and the quality of life for all our city residents. It's been our efforts to stand together in opposition to the power plant while bringing new businesses to Brockton and helping existing businesses continue to grow. And it has been a commitment to invest in our infrastructure, in our schools, in our parks, in our playgrounds, and in our streets and roads that will provide our city with a stronger foundation for years to come. These are the reasons why I've always dedicated my heart and my soul to the city, and this is the work that makes it an honor and a privilege to lead Brockton as your mayor. My name is Linda Balzotti, and I proudly ask for your vote on Tuesday, um, November 5th. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I again appreciate uh, the efforts of everyone to uh, make this forum possible. Uh, BCA, uh, along with uh, XBI Radio and, and the folks here at the Senior Center, uh, the uh, Council on Aging. Um, I think that uh, Mayor Balzotti is running on her record, and I guess I'm running on her record also, uh, because I've watched and lived through the past four years of the Balzotti administration. Higher taxes pay raises for city officials, including herself, more violent crimes on the streets of this city, and a city hall that is closed for business. Our city is better than this. We can do better. I have a vision for Brockton, and I've outlaid many specific plans that will allow us to have a city of Brockton that features less crime, lower taxes, and a city hall that has a sign on it that says, open for business. I'm ready to work together with everyone in the city. Together we can rebuild our city. It's time for a change. My name is Bill Carpenter. I humbly ask you for your vote on November 5th, and I will be proud to serve as your next mayor. Thank you both.
Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Search We Can to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day.